Now that ISIS has been defeated in Iraq and only controls about 5% of the territory in Syria, it looks like the caliphate is dead. So what now for the Christians of Iraq and Syria? Two patriarchs from the oldest churches in the Middle East were in Washington this week. Let's listen in on what they had to say. We hear it always that displaced and refugees ought to be given a chance to live in dignity wherever they may be. Those nations have closed their borders and have prevented those people from entering into their countries and they left them under the rain and in the snow. Where is the human dignity and all that? If the family is living under a tent and you've given that family something to eat, do you think and do you feel that that's enough for their human dignity to be safeguarded? If they really want human dignity, the first thing they have to do is stop the war and allow those people to go back to their countries, the countries they have built and the civilizations they have built together in order to be able to live there in dignity. Unfortunately, the way those people were left on the roads, were left under very difficult circumstances, says that deep down, those people were not considered even as human beings. Since the very beginning of the war, we, the patriarchs and all the heads of uh, churches and religious denominations, we raised our voice and we wanted the war to stop. And we uh, tried to tell the world that uh, the fate of Christians and the fate of all those countries are in jeopardy. Uh, apparently, there was a question which said, is the secularism of the West uh, responsible for uh, not intervening to help the Christians in the Middle East. Our problem is not with the, with the uh, populations of the countries. Our problems are with the politicians who do not give enough value to uh, the Christian presence in the Middle East. The countries don't care about the Christian presence, nor about the effect that the Christian presence has on those civilizations. The uh, politicians and countries have interests. They find, try to find where they can get uh, petrol, money, and, and everything else. But they forget that if the Christians disappear from the Middle East and the civilization that Christians and Muslims have built together, this will lead to a disastrous situation not only for the Middle East, but also for people all over the world, because the Muslim moderation will disappear. As you know, here in the United States, there's been this push for a possible homeland for Christians in Kurdistan and even parts of Syria. If there's a balkanization of Syria after the war, what do these two Beatitudes uh, feel about that? <laughs> To talk about ethnic groups and nationalities and denominations and other separate issues does not fit the Christians to begin with. We want Lebanon to be one Lebanon and one Syria united and Iraq, Iraq واحد, and آمين. one united Iraq. وهكذا وأرجو الانتباه كثيرا لهذا الموضوع إذا كنا نريد أو نتكلم عن حماية المسيحيين. This is very vital if we were to talk about the defense of Christians. وإذا بدي نكون جريء أكثر من ذلك أريد أن أقول على الأقل فيما يتعلق بمصيرنا في بلادنا إنه لنا قول يعني ولو لنا قول. We have something to say. We have our own opinion. We are the people who live there. Allow me that we are not in a position to accept 
any solutions that are given or imposed on us. We meet here and everywhere expressing our own words and concerns, but we would, would do, do not want to be reduced as being only listeners to what is dictated on us, that they should also hear us what we have to say to them. We are grateful for all those who love for the welfare and the being and the well-being of our country. It is our right to seek unity of our own country. And our rights is to express our own destiny and our own plight.